Shit up, put the hip shit on the shelf Cause the way the real web is being real with self My eyes done seen the glory of the coming of the left I can't do it by myself, so I'm asking for help It's time to switch it up, put the hip shit on the shelf Cause the way the real web is being real with self My eyes done seen the glory of the coming of the left I can't do it by myself, so I'm asking for help Money, money, money. That's all oh, he talks about. There's nothing wrong with being wealthy. Like Kanye West says, having money is not everything, not having it is. Oh, no, Deuteronomy 8 18 says, God gives us the ability to create wealth. Money is the root of all money. No, it's the love of money that's the root of all money. Yes, I do think about all the things in money. I'm just trying to leave a legacy for my Money's family. not everything, but when you got it, you can do some cool stuff. And now, your host for Talking Money in the Morning, financial health mentor to the working class, Mr. A. Cortez. What up, what up, what up, what up? Sounds like a no show, don't it? That sounds like a mainstream show. Good morning, Black America. That might be the name of my next show. All right, y'all know what it is, man. Our three part series we're talking about um, stimulating the black economy. Stimulating the black economy. Today we're talking about jobs creation, right? I know that's a little weird coming from the ultimate capitalist and 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 uh, one of the biggest promoters of entrepreneurship, but jobs are important. Jobs are needed. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. So let me just go ahead and get set up. Uh, we're going to roll right into today's show. Go ahead and share the stream if you haven't already. Files. Mm -hmm. oh, let me turn those chimes off before we get started. There we go. All right, let's do it. Welcome to Talk of Money in the Morning Live with your main man, H. Cortez, the one and only financial health mentor to the black community, everybody's favorite fatherpreneur, where I do my absolute best to bring practical, proven wealth building strategies to working men and women all over this great nation of ours. It is truly an honor, privilege, and a blessing to come to you live and direct from the Black Wealth Movement Studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. Guys, if you are still on the fence about the Black Wealth Movement and you have not yet decided that this is a good fit for you, let me tell you a little bit about what the Black Movement, Black Wealth Movement is. The Black Wealth Movement is a, a network of men and women committed to bringing financial empowerment to the black community for the sole purpose of economic empowerment and community development. But you cannot develop a community without capital and you cannot empower a people uh, economically unless you empower those people and you have to start with education 
and they're the only education that's not taught in school is a financial education. So we're committed to teaching financial literacy in the black community. So once every black family gets their financial footing under them, then we can attack some of the problems in the community. I, I say it all the time and I hope no one takes offense, but I can give a damn about the fires that are going on in the community when my house is burning down. I'm gonna say it again. I don't care too much about any of the fires that are going on in the community when my house is burning down. We're helping black people all over America put the fire out in their own homes first and foremost, then we can collectively attack the fires that are in the community. We teach five core wealth building principles, entrepreneurship, tax minimization, debt elimination, credit education, and asset accumulation. You will not be able to build wealth without some component of all five of those things working in your life. And we have a systematic way by which we teach those things to uh, Black America. So if you want more information on the Black Wealth Movement, simply text Black Wealth Movement to 314-874-6887. You can inbox me, private message me, uh, leave a comment on YouTube, and I will get back with you and get you some more information that gives you more details about the Black Wealth Movement and how it's all fitting together and what we're doing and where we are going. So today we're talking about stimulating the black economy part two and we're talking about job creation. But before we get started, do me a huge favor as you check this out on Periscope. I invite your friends to come take a listen. Uh, make sure that you subscribe to the feed yourself. Uh, same thing with you guys on YouTube. Go ahead and uh, hit the subscribe button if you have not already subscribed to the channel and then copy this link and share it on your favorite social media timeline whether it's LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you like to share things, go ahead and share this out uh, so that you can we can get more people involved in this conversation and then you guys on Facebook do the same thing. Go ahead and share the stream uh, on your timeline, invite people. Uh, the hearts, thumbs up and likes really mean something in the world of Facebook. It determines how many people they will push the show out to um, when we get started every morning. So uh, the more people engage with the show, the more people Facebook will show it to. So please give me the likes, hearts, and thumbs up. That is important. Uh, and then remind me mid-show to ask those who come on a little bit later to share the stream uh, as well. And for those of you who are new, have never seen Talking Money in the Morning, I like to always let you know exactly who the show is for. This show is for risers and grinders only, man. If you're ready to get up, get out, and get something, then this is your show. This show is for legacy builders. If you're like me, before I go to bed every night, I lay down and I ask myself, what am I going to do tomorrow, next month, next year, next five years, next 10 years to make sure that my children's children will be proud to bear my last name. If that is you, then this is your show. This show is for those who are sick and tired of being sick and tired to the point that they're ready to take action. If that is you, this is your, sh your show because we want to give you a game plan. We want to give you some strategies to help not only you, but help the community at large because we're all in this thing together. Now, on the other hand, who is this show not for? This show is not for the eternal pessimists. Right? I run into people all the time who got a problem for every solution. And when I follow up their problem with another solution, they've got yet another problem. If that's you, this ain't your show, man. I promise you ain't. Uh, if you are the type of person who's got that weird relationship with money where you think capitalism is evil, you think money is a dirty word, you think wealthy people are snobs, if that's you, get off my stream. How dare you? Because everybody on this stream is wealthy. Right. When you have that kind of relationship with money, I want you to understand something. Chances are you're repelling money away from you instead of attracting it to you. No, money is not everything. But when you put money in its proper perspective, money can help a lot of things fall in place. Right. So if that's you, you can exit stage left. I promise you, we will not miss you. And like I tell you each and every morning, I have no problem with you not wanting to be wealthy. I only have a problem with you having a problem with me wanting to be wealthy. And if you've never seen a future billionaire before, I want you to take a screenshot. Jeez. And watch me work because it's going down 2027. Yes. I'm not only bold enough to proclaim that I'm a future billionaire. I'm putting a date on that thing so that you know exactly when. And then 10 years from now, when y'all come back to these episodes and I've been telling you every morning for 10 years that I'm a future billionaire. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
That's, that's what we're doing here. All right. So today we're talking about stimulating the black economy. Go ahead and share the stream out. And if you haven't already shared it, if you're just jumping on. Uh, and I'm going to give some anecdotes for the black community on how we can transform our communities in less than 10 years. Man, I, man it's we just got to do some things differently, y'all. And you, you see in parentheses, I put lazy Susan, right? In parentheses, I put lazy Susan because I want you to think about something. If we're going to create jobs, first thing we have to do is, is we go over the same two principles that we did in, 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 in part one. Number one, we cannot wait for everyone. A lot of people are not making a move because they're waiting on everybody else to make a move. We're constantly being told in the media that black people won't unite. Therefore, we will not do anything unless all of black America unites. That's a trick of the devil, y'all. Come on, let's be, let's be real. Has it ever taken all of any group of people to do anything? No, it takes a handful of committed people to make real sustainable change. So, one, let's stop waiting on everybody. Two, we're only looking to work with the people who are already doing the work. See, we're trying to recruit people to help us do this work and they're not working at all. <laughs> Get off your assets and let's create some assets, right? We're trying to recruit people who are sitting on the sidelines and content with being cheerleaders. We're only going to work with the people who are already doing the work. Stop waiting on everybody. It's not going to happen. We will be waiting forever if we're waiting for all of black America to get their act together. And then if we continue to try to force people who are not willing to do this work to, to, to work with us and to help us solve some of these problems, we will only frustrate our own selves. How many of you guys know it is when you have to beg somebody to do something, it's extremely frustrating to have to continue to beg them to take action. No, we're only working with those who are already doing the work. Does that make sense? We will only work with those who are already doing the work. I say all the time as I'm building the Black Wealth Movement and, and me and my, my, my cohorts, we're grinding really hard. And I tell them all the time, I said, who are we looking for? We're looking for people who are looking for us. We're looking for people who are already running from the plantation. We're not looking for people on the plantation who is constantly saying, man, one day I'm going to run. And one day I'm going to run. No, we're looking for people who are already running. When you join the Black Wealth Movement, the first thing I do is strip your shirt off, metaphorically speaking, and I look at your back to see if there's already lash marks on there. That means you've been running for a while and you've gotten caught and dragged back to the plantation and you had to take your lashes. We're looking for people who are already doing the work, right? Because if you have to beg somebody to start, you're going to have to continue to beg them to keep going. That is tiring, that is frustrating, and we have no place for that, right? So if we're going to stimulate the black economy, we have to just take inventory of our resources and the people who are already moving, the people who are already grinding, and let's work with them to get things, to make things happen better. Now, you saw that I put in parentheses, Lazy Susan, right? In order to stimulate the black economy through the creation of jobs, that simply means that we have to start producing something. Whoa, did I just say the P word out loud? <laughs> yes, we can no longer continue to be lifelong consumers. At some point, we have to start producing some of the things that we consume. Period, man. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. You can't soften that blow, sugarcoat it. If we're going to create jobs, we have to become producers of some of the things that we consume. So I thought it'd be pretty cool to do a, a play on words and use the, the, the phrase lazy Susan because one of the things that, that they are screaming from the top of their lungs that black people are lazy. Black people aren't lazy. Black people are some of the hardest working people on this planet. 
uh, and, and it's evident by the creation that <laughs> we have created on this planet, which is pretty much everything, especially here in America, right? But when you understand that becoming producers is how you stimulate your economy because you create jobs, you not only create products and services that will be sold in your community to make revenue, but you also create the jobs and the production of those things. So the reason I put Lazy Susan in parentheses is because I want you to think about this. Go into any black-owned restaurant in America, if they have a little sit-in place for you to eat, there is what's called a Lazy Susan. That's the thing that has all of the stuff that sits in the middle of the table. It usually spins around and in, in, in a lot of black restaurants it doesn't spin around. But it, it, it consists of a handful of things. And I just wrote these down and I, I want you to think about something. If we only produced the things on the Lazy Susan that you see in any black owned restaurant, if that is all we produce, and you know what? We're not even going to produce these things for mass consumption. We're not going to produce them to be sold in the grocery stores. We're not going to be producing them to, to, to be retail. We're only going to produce them to be distributed throughout the black owned restaurants throughout the country. Right. I'm going to show you, give you an idea of how many jobs this can create. The Lazy Susan. If you think about the Lazy Susan in any, any restaurant, what's on that Lazy Susan? You have the napkins, and where there are napkins, there are napkin holders. What if we produce the napkins and the napkin holders? Right? You have salt and pepper. What if we mined the salt, grew the peppercorn, and produce the salt and pepper shakers? Right? There's always ketchup, hot sauce, steak sauce, maybe some barbecue sauce or something like that. What if we produce the ketchup, the hot sauce, the steak sauce that's on the Lazy Susan? Also in the Lazy Susan, there's a little cup that has your uh, little packets of sugar for my coffee drinkers and our artificial sweeteners and that little ceramic container that holds those. What if we produce that stuff, right? Also on the Lazy Susan are the menus for the restaurant. What, this is what I'm talking about. That is one, two, three, four, five, seven to 10 things. What if we just only produce those things? We don't produce no shoes, we don't produce no cars, we don't produce no clothes. We just produce the things on a lazy Susan. Hey guys, real quick, I promise I won't take you long to get you back to the show, but I just want you to know that I have a free copy for you of Monetize My Life, my way of saying thank you for supporting me and following this show and all the words of encouragement. So I wanna give back to you a free download of Monetize My Life because my mission in life is to empower people economically through entrepreneurship. So I wrote this little book to help you understand how to take the gifts, talents, and special abilities that God has blessed you with and turn them into profitable enterprises. So go over to financialhealthmentor.com forward slash downloads and you can download this book for free and hopefully it will help you uncover your passion which will lead you to your purpose and where your purpose is there is your vision and also your provision. So thanks so much for all the support. Now let's get back to the show. We, we're just gonna start there because we're new to this production game. So we're just gonna say, hey, we're gonna become producers and the first thing we're gonna produce is the things that you will find on a Lazy Susan in a black owned restaurant, right? How many jobs can actually be created? Uh, uh, I want to form I will feel uh, <laughs> with, with help. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's connect on that. Let's connect on that. I, I love, uh, you know, I, I, I don't have my Ralph Angel bibs on today, but yeah, I, I love uh, uh, forming, putting my feet in the dirt, putting my hands in the dirt and growing food. But let, let's talk about how many jobs can be created if we just produce those things that you find on the Lazy Susan, right? What, what, again, what are those things? There's napkins, then there's napkin holders. 
There is salt, pepper, and salt pepper shakers. There is ketchup, hot sauce, or steak sauce, some sort of sauce and seasonings, right? There is sugar, uh, uh, artificial sweeteners, and, and the containers that they place those things in, and then there's menus. Those are just five or seven things that, that you will find common in most restaurants. So let's, let's start with tissue or, or, or paper towels. We know that paper towel is a paper product. Where does a paper towel come from? Where do paper products come from? Paper products come from uh, the leftover uh, uh, shavings from uh, uh, mills, from wood mills, right? When they transform a tree into lumber, then those shavings that fall to the ground, they are scooped up and then they were taken to a processing plant and those processing plants turn those shavings, those wood shavings into all sorts of paper products, right? Those processing, those paper mills uh, discard tons and tons and tons of uh, shavings and, 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 and wood chips and, and, and stuff that comes from turning trees into usable lumber like two by fours and two by sixes and all that kind of stuff. So when you take those, that waste, that discarded product, then that is taken to a paper mill and those paper mills or those shavings uh, and that sawdust is transformed into paper products, right? So let's just say we don't own the lumber mills. We're just getting that sawdust and those wood shavings and we do have our own paper mills and we're processing paper paper products right that creates a ton of jobs in and of itself right that creates a ton of jobs in and of itself we have freedom paper right now what if all of the black owned restaurants businesses and churches today only got their paper products from Freedom Paper. If all the black-owned churches, which you know we have a lot of black-owned churches all across the country, those churches need paper products, tissues, napkins, paper towels, uh, uh, things of that nature, sometimes paper plates and, and paper bowls and that. What if all the black-owned restaurants black owned uh, businesses and black owned churches got all of their paper products from Freedom Paper, the black owned paper uh, 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 company. That will make that company have to grow exponentially within the next two to five years and that is a small company and school, well, well we don't have many black schools uh, but yes, school, we're just talking about things that we own and control where we own and control the budget. Most of the times we have schools, even HBCUs, we don't own and control those budgets, right? So uh, a church owns their budget. They determine where they buy their paper products from. A, a black owned business owns and controls that budget. They can say, okay, we're only going to buy our napkins, paper towels, and tissue for our restrooms from this company, Right? Black owned restaurants own that budget. They determine we're only going to buy our paper products from this, this, this entity, Freedom Paper, right? That Freedom Paper company would then have to grow and hire more people to produce that turnout. Chances are, if all of the black owned businesses all across the country has to do that, that means Freedom Paper would also have to expand its distribution network and either they would have to build distribution centers all across the country or they would have to outsource and hire black owned companies to become part of their distribution chain. So maybe you as an entrepreneur will say, I'm not the one seeking the job, but I can help people create jobs. I'm a partner with Freedom Paper and I'm going to buy a, a uh, buy me a nice piece of land and build me a nice uh, a piece of warehouse. Uh, and then I'm going to be one of the distribution hubs for Freedom Paper. I'm going to let them bring and store tons and tons of paper and I'm going to dispatch it to the whole Midwest since I'm in here in St. Louis. 
And then somebody might say, I'm going to do the same thing out on the West Coast. I'm going to create a distribution hub for Freedom Paper in California. I'm going to partner with them. They're going to let me distribute their paper throughout all of the black owned churches, restaurants and, and businesses in the community. And I'm going to be able to make me a profit and we're going to grow. We're talking about simple strategies that can create tons and tons and tons of jobs. If all of the black owned restaurants, churches, and businesses got all of their paper products from Freedom Paper, that company would have to grow to a billion dollar company almost overnight. And that will create tons and tons of jobs. If they're going to create distribution networks, what does that also mean? They're going to need delivery trucks and drivers to move those products into the respective churches, restaurants, and so on and so forth. That's just paper products. So just with the paper products alone, we've created 100,000 jobs, right? Just with the paper products alone. What about salt? Salt is mined. So we have to find a way to own some salt mines, right? But if we own some salt, just say we don't even own any salt mines, right? But we do have a connection to buy the salt wholesale, from the mines because we don't own them yet. So we're buying tons and tons of salt. We're breaking it down. We're processing it. We're, we're, we're putting it in the boxes. And we have Blackman's salt. Right? Y'all like that? Blackman's. Blackman's salt. <laughs> we have Blackman's salt. And, and, and so now uh, we, we're sourcing the salt until we can own some salt mines. We're sourcing the salt. Right? Uh, and, and now the salt is coming through our community. And again, we're not selling the salt in supermarkets. We're only selling the salt to the black owned restaurants. Right. We're just going to start there. So now we produce not only the salt. But guess what? Again, the salt is usually distributed in a box. A box is paper product. So now we go back to Freedom Paper and say, hey, we know that you guys are good at making Paper towels, napkins, tissue, paper plates, paper bowls. Can you now manufacture us a salt box? Now we are adding to their product line because we're coming to them with a need that we know that they can fill. Right? This is what we're talking about. We're talking about creating jobs here, using and producing a few things that we consume. Not everything that we're consuming. We're just talking about producing the things that you will find on a Lazy Susan in a restaurant. So now they produce the salt box because we're already doing business with them. Now we got the salt box. The salt is being boxed up. And then we distribute that to all of the black owned restaurants across the country. We also then produce the salt and pepper shakers. Right. Listen, man, listen, this ain't this ain't rocket science. This ain't nothing that is as hard as ain't nothing that can't be done. Yes, we have to deal with some regulators and all that stuff, man. But we're talking about simple stuff. What about the pepper? Pepper comes from peppercorn. Peppercorn is grown. Then you have your peppercorn farmers. If you have peppercorn farmers, that means you have peppercorn farm equipment. If you have peppercorn farm equipment, that means you have a peppercorn farm equipment maintenance. You see how when you just produce one thing, you create this domino effect of other things, other needs that have to be filled. You produce one thing and you create a domino effect of all of these other needs that have to be filled. And we just start backfilling all of these needs with black owned companies and black labor. It's not hard, y'all. It's not hard. It's not hard. So once we go that route, then we can. Now we got black peppercorn. So now we got Blackman's black pepper. Right. All right. Now you need the equipment to do all of that stuff. Now you create equipment maintenance. Now you have equipment uh, crews. Now we take some of the engineers and we start engineering our own equipment to do what we need to do specific to our needs. Then you take uh, that salt that has to be boxed up 
and, and, and distribute it to all of the black owned restaurants throughout the country, then we have to uh, create a distribution chain yet again. What is that? That is more warehouses, that is more trucks, that is more drivers, that is more uh, 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 vans to get this in the hands of the people that will actually be using it. And if you created more warehousing, that means you're going to have maintenance on the warehouses. You create more trucks. That means you have maintenance on the trucks. You create more uh, vans and delivery drivers. That means you create another system of jobs. See, we are no longer at the place where we can beg another culture to give us a job. We have to start creating our own jobs. Until, and until we provide something for our children to do, they're never going to come off the streets because the streets is where they can make a living. Until we can come up with something better for our children to do, a better way for them to make a living, they're never going to come off the streets. And if they never come off the streets, they're going to continue to fill the prisons. They're going to continue to uh, create havoc in our communities, not because they're bad, but because they're sick. And we're sick as their parents by not creating the outlet for them to transform their lives. Now, we've only produced paper products in salt and pepper, right? And all so far, we've created two, three hundred jobs, two, two three hundred thousand jobs. Just by creating paper products and salt and pepper, man. Right? So, what about the sauces? What about the ketchup? What if we produced and manufactured our own ketchup? Right? What if we just said, hey, here's a genius idea. Let's get together with some of the farms who still own some land in the South. And let's just grow a, a, a boatload of tomatoes. We're just going to grow a boatload of tomatoes. And I'm going to take those tomatoes to a processing, uh, processing plant. Those tomatoes are going to be processed. They're going to be transformed into the raw materials needed to make ketchup. We're going to make the ketchup. We're going to bottle the ketchup. We're going to label the ketchup. And then we're going to distribute the ketchup. Y'all see where I'm going with this? If we only produced ketchup... If we only, if ketchup was the only thing that black people produce, we will create 500,000 to a million jobs. He said, wait, H. Cortez, you overshooting it, man. Nobody eats that much ketchup. Listen to me carefully. If we only produced ketchup out of all of the things black people consume, if we only produced ketchup, we'd create 500,000 to a million jobs. How does that work? In order to produce ketchup, what do you need? In order to use ketchup, what do you need? You need tomatoes as the base, right? Well, in, in, in today's society, if you look at some of the other ketchups out there, corn syrup is the base, right? <laughs> But let's just assume that we're going back about 50 years where tomatoes were the base of ketchup, right? You need tomatoes. So that means you need tomato farmers. You need tomato farmers, right? Maybe you have 25 to 50 large tomato farms throughout the country producing enough tomatoes to make enough ketchup to only supply the black owned restaurants. We're not even talking about ketchup to, um, to sell retail so people can have it on their shelves. We're just talking about only enough to supply the black owned restaurants. Right? So you got 25 to 50 tomato farms throughout the country and they're only growing tomatoes to feed their families and to produce this ketchup. Right? On those 25 to 50 farms, you will probably have 10 to 20 people fielding and managing those farms, 
right? It doesn't take a lot of people to manage forms. You only have 10 to 20 people managing those forms. So you say you got 50, you got 20, 20 times 50, uh, uh, two times five is 10. So you're talking about, you know, a couple hundred people, uh, a thousand people maybe just in the farming aspect. But here's how, if you only produce one thing, the amount of job grows exponentially. Because when you take the tomatoes from the farm, the tomatoes have to first go to a processing plant to process them, which will be produced by us. We will own the processing plant, right? So that's 1,000 just, just employees just in the farming aspect. But that 1,000 quickly goes to 10,000 when the tomatoes go to the processing plant. First of all, how do the tomatoes get to the processing plant? We have shipping mechanisms. We have to call on black drivers and black uh, 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 driving companies to haul the uh, tomatoes to the plants, right? That's another industry in and of itself. The tomatoes get to the processing plants. You might have another 100 people in 50 to 100 processing plants across the country to process all of those tomatoes. Right. So once the tomatoes are processed in the processing, you have machinery that needs to be built and maintained. That's another industry in and of itself. It is processed and then it is canned in the big 55 gallon drums. The, the, the raw materials, then it has to be moved to another plant who's actually going to create the tomato or uh, the ketchup recipe. Right. And how does it get moved again? That's where your black truckers come in. Where's my man Donovan at uh, 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 DK? Right. That's where your black truckers come in. Now you have another situation where you are creating the actual ketchup and bottling that ketchup. Right. So we went from a thousand jobs on the farm to 10,000 jobs in these processing stages. And then you go from making the actual recipe and bottling it up. Right. But guess what? Where do the bottles come from? There's a plant somewhere owned by us that has to produce the ketchup bottles. Are y'all seeing how if we just produce one friggin thing, we create 500,000 to a million jobs. So now we've got this plant over here that produces the million bottles that we need of ketchup, of black men's ketchup, right? There's nothing wrong with black men's ketchup. Uh, <laughs> and they bring the bottles over to the, the, the plant that we actually produce the recipe and get the finished product from. Again, how did the empty bottles get to the plant? They'll go your black truckers again. Now we produce the recipe, the bottles are filled, and then guess what? We need to put some labels on those bottles. How do the labels stick to the bottles? There is some sort of an adhesive. And guess what? Somebody has to create and produce and manufacture that adhesive. That's a whole nother set of jobs created over there. And the just the production and manufacture of the adhesive that's going to stick the label to the bottle. This ain't hard stuff, y'all. Somebody just has to undertake the work. Guess what? Before the label gets on the bottle, somebody has to print some stuff on the label. Somebody has to put the name and the logo for Blackman's on the label. Right? When you put that name on the label, how is that name placed on the label? That name is placed on that label with ink. Where does ink come from? Most inks today are soy based. So if we're going to produce our own ink, that gives us another thousand people in farming situations that are producing enough soybeans so that we can create the inks and the dyes that we need to print the labels on our black men's ketchup. That's another 50,000 jobs we created and just processing the soybeans to create the ink that we need to make the labels for black men's ketchup. If we produce just one thing, we can create 500,000 to a million jobs. If we create just one thing. 
right? Then you put the labels on the actual bottles, right? Black owned company creates the adhesive. A black owned company creates the ink from the processing of the soybeans that they grow on their farm. And now the soybean is processed and transformed to ink. So that's more jobs. Now the ink is placed on the label. The label goes on the bottle. Ketchup is packed up in cases. Guess what? What are the cases made of? Again, paper products. We go back to uh, Freedom Paper. Can you create some boxes where we can pack 24 boxes of ketchup at a t uh, bottles of ketchup at a time? So now the paper product company gets more business because they have to provide the boxes that we pack the ketchup in to then ship the ketchup all around the country. Now the black trucking companies get more business because we produced one friggin' thing. And then the ketchup gets shipped to all the distribution centers of the country. And then the distribution centers break the ketchup down into smaller uh, 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 containers. And, and van drivers will drive the, the product into all of the black-owned restaurants and drop it off. And that's one freaking product. And then guess what? Because a lot of our black owned restaurants are takeout based, you have another company who has to take the black man's recipe and then squirt it into the little ketchup packages. That's a whole nother situation that creates another 100,000 jobs. See, when you can produce, you not only produce a product or service, you produce an entire economy. I'm going to say that again. When you can produce, you not only produce a single product or service, you produce an entire economy. And then you put all of these factories, these industries, all of this stuff goes in the black community so that the tax dollar, the tax base from all of this production and manufacturing literally goes right into the communities. And when that money goes into the communities where we own all of the properties in that community, then you can dictate who polices that community. Y'all ain't hearing me. When you want to get serious about stopping police, police brutality, you own where you live because until, until you own where you live, you will never be able to dictate and control who polices your community. So we can produce all of this stuff and put all of these factories, these distribution hubs right in our own communities right in our own communities and we can benefit from it all you remember there was a day where every community was centered around some some factory some plant and people literally walked to work this is how we're going to rebuild the black community this is what the black wealth movement is all about and and that's one of the reasons that i'm doing this series because i want to give you a glimpse into where the black wealth movement is going yes i want somebody to take some of these ideas and run with them now but best believe that's my aspirations for being a billionaire because if nobody does it, I will do all of this stuff myself. If nobody does it, I will do all of this stuff myself. You will see the name Blackman's on everything. Right? Now, we're talking about just the products that are on the Lazy Susan. And we, need, we ain't got past ketchup yet. Right? What about sugar? Say, 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 say. We know that those industries are, are, are locked up. Say we can't break into sugarcane farming right away. But we can source, we can be the first person beyond the sugarcane farm. We go directly to the farmer and say, hey, we're going to buy your processed sugar right from you before it gets sold to a buyer, a wholesaler, or anybody else. We're going to buy it directly from the manufacturer. So, we're going to buy our own sugar. So now you got black men's sugar. So we didn't produce it, but still what happens when we buy sugar by the barge load? It has to still be processed. So 
We take a barge load of sugar, just like, come on, man, it's weight, man. Who, who, who better at breaking down weight than us, right? It's weight. We buy, buy sugar by the weight, and we break it down and package it and brand it. Now we got black men's sugar. And we distribute it. Just in the, the, the buying, breaking down, and packaging it, that's another 50,000 jobs for black men's sugar. Put it in the bags. Guess what? That bag is a paper product. We go back to Freedom Paper. Hey, can you create us some four pound bags because we're going to be putting our sugar in these four pound bags? Hey, can you create us some, 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 some half pound boxes and some two pound boxes because we're going to be putting our sugar in these boxes? Black men's sugar. So you got your two pound box, you got your half pound box, you got your four pound bag. Black men's sugar. This is how jobs are created, but it starts when... One, she said, I volunteer to talk to Ralph Angel about the sugar. <laughs> I, I want you go ahead, go ahead, Mo, go ahead. I see you. And then we distribute the sugar. And then there's a whole nother situation where the sugar has to be further breaking, broken down into single serving packages. It has to be broken down to single serving packages, right? For our coffee drinkers. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we push sugar like weight. Right? Ice Cube puts rhymes like weight. We push sugar like weight. Who better than breaking down weight uh, 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 than us, uh, uh, Chad? You get a ton of sugar. And you break it down into keys. You break those keys down into ounces. You break those ounces down into grams. You package that stuff up. You label it. Blackman sugar. And then we distribute it. Who's better at distribution than us? We understand all this stuff very keenly. We just have been kept out of the game because of our thought process has been so limited. Right? Now, of course, with all of this stuff, you got to keep in mind that it comes with machinery that has to be engineered, designed, manufactured, and maintained. That's a whole nother deal assembly lines that have to be designed manufactured maintained and continue to 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 evolve that's a whole nother thing now our black engineers have a place to work how many black engineers do you know man that's got that degree that's 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 working a job but they're not doing anything meaningful because the only reason they're on the job is to fill a quota so that the company that hired them can say that they practice diversity so they can get tax breaks huh y'all y'all don't be listening man am i talking fast or y'all listening slow how many black engineers do you know that are on jobs with companies that aren't doing anything significant because the only reason they're on that job is because that Fortune 500, that Fortune 100, that Fortune 50 company has to maintain a certain amount of minorities on payroll so they can have the diversity to get the tax credit for being diverse and providing minority employment. They think we don't know that stuff. But we take those black engineers and say, y'all come on back home. I got a sugar processing plant that I need to have engineered to be uh, manufactured the machinery that it's going to take to systematically get this sugar in four pound blocks to fall right into uh, these bags and create these assembly lines. Man. Yeah, yeah. We're we, we going to turn this whole thing around, Isaac. I'm going to turn this whole thing around, right? So now, just in, in creating one thing, creating one thing, man, creating one thing, we can create 500 to 1,000 jobs. And really, that ain't even, that ain't even the half of it, man. 
Because if you create 500,000 jobs, that is more money in the black community. That means that money is going to cycle into other small uh, 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 mom and pop shops in the community. That's going to create more businesses and more jobs. That Man, this is why we got to get our money right, Mojo. Mona, you, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So then, you know, I was going to just continue to go on down the line. We create menus. Again, the menus are paper. So we go back to Freedom Paper. Can you create menus? Laminate them for us. Again, the menus have to have print on them. Where does the print come from? The print comes from ink. Where does the ink come from? The ink comes from soy. Where does soy come from? The soy comes from our black farmers. Now, uh, uh, so, uh, 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 farming something that's meaningful to the community. And we can pay our black farmers top dollars for their soy-based uh, 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 oils and inks. I'm going to put a clip up today, man, of this video where a young lady who was on a breakfast club. I, I, I got to get her name, but she was talking about how when the Great Northern Migration happened, when, when black people were running from the lynching in the South, because that's what it was. We, 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 we often wonder why our black, our, our, many of our black family vacated the South to the North, even though they known they knew it was uh, 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 the same hill up North. But the difference between the hill in the North and the hill in the South, the hill in the South will get you hanging from a tree. The hill in the North would. Uh, uh, crush your spirit, but at least you'd be alive, right? Five million pe black people who owned land in the South fled north. If that five million families still own that land today, we wouldn't be in the situation where we're struggling financially. Five million families fled north the end of slavery to, to outrun the lynchings that were going on because lynching was so prevalent. And they vacated some of the most minerally rich, fertile soil on the entire planet. They left all of that wealth because they were run out from fear of being lynched because at that time there was no that there was no uh, fight in black people to stand their ground yeah yeah at that time there was no fight in us because no matter what, if somebody came to lynch me and my family, somebody came to burn a cross on my family and I killed them on, their pro on my property, I would get lynched anyway. So we vacated trillions of dollars of valuable land out of this fear of standing up for ourselves. But imagine if we still had that land today. We'd be able to grow our own food in mass. There's just a lot. I mean, it's, it's crazy. But we're going to get back there, y'all. That's what the Black Wealth Movement is all about. Right? So, you got your black farmers who are creating, growing enough soybeans to create the soy oils. Uh, so that the oils can be transformed into inks. So that we can do all of our printing stuff with. See, that, that's, we're talking about creating jobs in mass. All we have to do is manufacture one thing, y'all. We just produce one thing in mass. And that will create tons and tons and tons of jobs. But, but here's the one caveat. It's in the creation and the production and the processing of that one thing. In order to get the snowball effect that I'm talking about, we cannot, no matter price or no matter uh, situation, intimidation tactics or whatever, if I'm starting to build my processing plant, I can't be leveraged into using whites only union workers to build everything. I've got to be able to use black engineering firms to come and do that. When I start building my tomato processing plants, I can't be 
undersold by by some other company saying that hey we're going to produce all of your plastic bottles for your, your bottling needs no i've got to source out a black owned company that's going to produce the bottles or i have to build one myself because that's the only way this thing continues to trickle down and create the jobs that we need to have created there's a lot of broken down busted up factories in our communities right now and all they serve as is target practice for our kids to run and throw rocks in the windows to see if they can bust and break the windows. We can start re uh, repurposing those buildings right in our community and start rebuilding from scratch. Then we talk about the trucking industry that is needed for all of this to, to, to be connected together. That's why the uh, United States inter 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 uh, 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 highway system is one of the most sophisticated on the planet is because of trucking. Everything moves through truck. Once it comes to the shores through ships and, and, and planes, everything else is, is done by truck. There's a lot of black owned truck drivers and, and owner operators who own their own trucks. But they have to go source work elsewhere. There would be a lot more black owned trucking companies and, and those black owned truck drivers, they usually own just one truck. But if we start creating this situation, then you have black owned trucking companies who own fleets of trucks to hire black drivers. And you want to lift a kid up out of the streets? You tell him that I'm going to teach you how to drive this 18 wheeler and uh, at 18 years old, you're going to be making seventy five to dollars to $100,000 a year within two years. See, we've been taught that our children only want to gang bang. We've been taught that our children only want to sell drugs. No, nah, man. No, nah, man. What our children want is greater things. What they know that it's difficult to get those greater things at seven twenty-five an hour. So we have to create opportunities for them. Am I making an excuse for the kids? No. But I understand that when it comes to dealing with a sick people, there's a certain way you have to deal with them to get them to heal first. And you have to be patient with our babies. How many of you guys... Seen three, four, five, six of your close buddies killed, murdered, shot, maimed, and that didn't affect your psyche. See, this is the, the our children are living in a war zone, and we're mad that they're trying to figure out how to best survive in that war zone. And sometimes it is with partnering up with a gang. Sometimes the best way to survive is to sell enough drugs so I can put a little army around me to keep me safe. But if we can just produce one thing, man, and start creating some real opportunities for our people, we can, we, we can really cut down on a lot of the foolishness that is going on in our communities right now. The reason that we have a lot of foolishness going on in our community is because of the suppression and oppression that we are under. And we're under a lot of suppression and oppression because we don't produce anything. And that has got to change. That's why we're starting the Black Wealth Movement. To help black people understand the power of capitalism in America, the power of getting your money right, the power of getting yourself out of debt, the power and leveraging credit to build some of these enterprises and some of these empires so that we can provide opportunities for ourselves. Tomorrow's show, we're going to wrap up this series talking about rebuilding uh, are stimulating the black economy through ownership and strategic partnership. Through ownership and strategic partnership. Stimulating the black economy. Tomorrow we're going to talk about stimulating the black economy through ownership and strategic partnership.
partnership. I appreciate you guys listening to me go on this one hour rant about how we can transform our economy if we simply do produce one thing, man. Just, just, just produce one something. You know, we don't have to, we don't have to produce everything that black people consume. That would be nice. If every other culture produces everything that they consume. Every other culture produces everything that they consume. We are the only culture that consumes everything from every other culture while producing nothing. We are the only culture that consumes everything from every other culture while producing basically nothing. That's going to change. I put this out so maybe some other people can see it who got resources to do things right now. But if it doesn't happen right now, it's going to change because that's why I'm leveling up big time to get my money right. Because this is what I'm going to be doing for and in our community. So with that, I'm H. Cortez, the one and only financial health mentor to the black community, everybody's favorite fatherpreneur. Until I talk to you tomorrow, I want you to get your money up because you absolutely can do it. Peace out, y'all.